Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. Let's take a look at um, something that will pop up sometimes, especially when we're changing um, coordinates, like from polar coordinates to Cartesian or something else. We might have something along these lines. In fact, why don't we just look at that? Why don't we have um, um, x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. So we're going to think about the chain rule and how we can use it in relation with this. Uh, so let's suppose that we have, um, uh, yeah, so let's suppose that we have a function. And right now it's in terms of x and y. Maybe it's like x squared plus yx or something like that. OK, and let's suppose that we want to, um, to think about what the, uh, what the derivative of f is with respect to r. Or in other words, we just write fr. So we want to know what fr is, or maybe we want to know what f of uh, or f theta is. Um, so where we have this right here going on. So maybe like we're changing coordinates and we want to rewrite x as r cosine theta where r theta that's in you know polar coordinates or something. How can we work with that? Well, chain rule again, what we could think of, let's just think of a, a function here, f with two inputs and a function here actually has two outputs and two inputs. The outputs are x and y and the inputs are r and theta. Okay. So um, we're going to think of the two functions. Maybe this function will be g and that function is f. So let's just think about these in tandem. So df and dg. So for df, it's just like what we think. It's, um, it's fx, fy. And for, and then dg, let's think about what this is. Since we have two outputs, we have two rows and two inputs, we have two columns. So it's like a two by two matrix here for dg. Um, okay. And so what we think about this as being, and um, okay, the row represents the output and the column represents the input. So we have, let's do r and theta, and let's just index these and x and y for outputs. So really we're gonna have like, what? Um, so we're gonna have x derivative with respect to r with respect to the input variable, and x here derivative with respect to theta. Here, y derivative with respect to r, and uh, y derivative with respect to theta. Okay, so it looks, it'll look something like this, all right? And so that's how we compute um, the derivative of, and then let's see what this is going to be when it comes out. Now, <clears throat> when this comes out, let's think about what the size of this is going to be or what kind of what we're gonna get. So if we do, um, okay, so this is a one by two, and this is a two by two. So matrix multiplication will give us a one by two. So we're gonna get something like this. You notice um, a matrix that has, um, that will represent two different, uh, two different um, inputs. In fact, it'll represent these two inputs here, the first two inputs. And this quantity will be whatever we get in this plot will be the derivative with respect to R that will be FR. And this one over here will be F theta. Um, so in other words, we're going to be computing fr and f theta, even though it, it wasn't written originally in r and theta, but, but, just the, but just multiplying these two matrices together will give us that. So let's go for that and see, how, see what we, we actually get. And then we can compute what fr is and what f theta is without actually substituting things in and, and working through it, but actually just using this matrix multiplication idea. <clears throat> and this... This idea is going to be very important when we're integrating later and we want to transform things from one coordinate system to another. Sometimes that makes for easier formulas and integrals when we do a transformation, actually. But it's kind of, it kind of follows it. It basically is just the chain rule in this way when we're looking at derivatives of things or differentials, if you will, in some, some sense. So we're going to be working with that. So here, let's take a derivative of, so let's do this f x partial, which is just 2x plus y, and f partial y, let's see, that would be um, just x. Okay, 
So that's that DF matrix. For the DG matrix, um, so let's, we just go through this right here. X is equal to R cosine theta derivative with respect to R. It's just the coefficient of R, which is a constant in this case, which is just cosine theta. Um, derivative of, um, let's just do this one. Y with respect to R is just sine theta. Okay, now let's do, okay, this one. Um, X derivative with respect to theta, well, that would be a negative, um, uh, negative R cosine theta because we're thinking of R as a constant, or sine theta, sorry. Erase that. <sighs> sine theta. Negative R sine theta. Um, oh, this is parentheses. Okay. And then for this case, this would be R cosine theta. Taking a derivative with respect to theta there. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, if we're just in, let's just do one of them. So FR is going to be the first one right here. How do we get the first guy? Now the first guy comes from using the first column, which represents that as well. So it's kind of all in sync here. So for R, so we just basically take the dot product of this and that. So FR is going to be, then we could replace X with that, Y with that if we wanted to. So we could say, so in this case, that would be um, two R cosine theta plus R sine theta. So realize that this is just the two X plus Y. Um, and that's multiplied with the cosine plus, and then see the X is just R cosine theta. And that's uh, multiplied with the sine there. Wow. We just computed FR. F theta is computed similarly. Um, we just go through and we do this times that and um, plus this times that, replacing X and Y with what they are. And that's, uh, that's really essentially it. In fact, um, F, in fact, you know, this is the same. I just replaced those things in, um, let's see. Yeah, so basically this is that and, and this is that. So it's gonna look the same. We just replaced cosine and sine with something else. So if we wanted to change this to F theta, let's just see how that would change to make this F theta. So to make that F theta, so let's think, I would just change this and change that. So this would be um, uh, minus R sine theta, and this would be just multiplied. And then this one would be um, our cosine theta multiplied. So now I'm working with this column right there. So kind of fun, but that's one way that you can get um, F partial something else, um, especially when you have a transformation. So two variables, two variables, it's still completely possible. Here we had a two by two matrix for DG, but it still, still worked. Thanks for watching.